In a house on Tashmore Lake, in an out-of-the-way corner of western Maine, the best-selling novelist Morton Rainey, author of The Organ Grinder's Boy, Delacorte Family, Everybody Drops a Dime, and several other bestsellers, was asleep on a sofa in his living room. Who are you? You stole my story. You stole my story, and something's got to be done about it. Right is right, and fair is fair. The stranger standing on Mort's porch was thin as a rail. He wore a wide-brimmed black hat with a round crown, sort of hat the Quakers wear. In his work shirt and blue jeans, he was dressed, it occurred to Mort, for walking a furrow of played-out earth behind a mule's ass. And something has to be done. I don't know you. <laughs> but I know you, Mr. Rainey. That's what matters. Here. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh... Shooter. John Shooter. I don't read manuscripts, Mr. Shooter. You read this one already? You stole it. Listen, you better talk to my agent. We don't need outsiders, Mr. Rainey. This is between you and me. Yeah. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Now, Mr. Shooter... Yeah, friendly little thing. Yeah, come here, bro. <laughs> I don't like being accused of plagiarism. I don't blame you for not liking it. But you did it all the same. I've got nothing more to say to you, Mr. Shooter, so get off my porch. Okay, I'll go. Here. No, I told you, I'm not taking that. This has got to be settled, Mr. Rainey. As far as I'm concerned, it is. That was a fully paid up member of the crazy folk, Bump. Shooter. Let's hope he hasn't brought his gun. <laughs> Present for you, Mr. Rainey. Oh, no. We'll talk again. Later. Shooter, General Delivery, Delacorte, Mississippi. Secret window, secret garden. <laughs> well, Bump, that ain't one of mine. Mort tossed the manuscript in the trash without another glance. He went into the living room, lay down on the couch, and went back to sleep. Next morning, Mort was in his study. Four days after George confirmed that his wife was having an affair. Ah, uh, no. That his wife was cheating on him. He confronted her. We have to talk, Abby, he said. Oh, what crap. Because it's too close to real life. I've never been so hot in the real life. I guess that was part of the problem. <laughs> Uh, don't let me stop the good work. I've only come to get a soda. Did I hear you talking to someone in there? What? Oh, no, 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 Mrs. G. I was reading what I'd just written. See how it sounds. How does it go in there? Oh, the new novel? It's just fine, Mrs. G. It's steaming ahead. Well, I kind of meant, well, everything, Mr. Rainey. Uh, what? With you being all alone out here on the lake, now that Amy... Now that... Mrs. Rainey's not around anymore. Yeah, well, that's fine, too, Mrs. Gavin. <laughs> really, yeah. it was tough at first for both of us. Yeah, right. But we're through the worst of it now. I appreciate your concern, though. Really, I do. I know Amy will, too. You old harpy. You're just fishing for something juicy to toss to the vultures in the coffee shop. Okay, how's this? I caught my wife in bed with a real estate agent in one of Derry's finer hotels. Still think Amy's an angel now, Mrs. G? Be sure to give her my regards when you talk to her. Yeah, I will. Mm. 
Well, better get back to the grind. Yeah, me too. I meant you, you lazy bitch. Oh, Mr. Rainey, I found one of your stories in the trash. Oh, that's not? I thought you might want it, so I left it on the counter. I don't recall throwing anything away. John Shooter. You stole my story. Stole my story. My story. Todd Downey thought that a woman who would steal your love when your love was really all you had was not much of a woman. He therefore decided to kill her. Oh, no. Mr. Rainey. Mr. Rainey, are you all right? Back in his study, Mort went to the bookcase that held all the editions of his own works. Five novels and a collection of short stories. He took down the book of stories Everybody Drops the Dime and opened it at sewing season. An uncharacteristically creepy little tale originally published in Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. Mort started to read. A woman who would steal your love when your love was all you had wasn't much of a woman. That at least was Tommy Havelock's opinion. He decided to murder her. I don't believe it. He worked his way through the two stories, reading back and forth. Todd Downey thought that a woman who would steal... A woman who would steal your love when your love was really all you had. When your love was all you had was not... Wasn't much of a woman. That at least was Tommy Havelock's opinion. He decided to murder her. He therefore decided to kill her. They varied in diction a little, but basically they were the same. Mort quit smoking four years ago. Even during the worst times with Amy, he hadn't been tempted to light up. Now he began rummaging frantically through his desk. I had a half-finished pack. I know I did. I'm all done now, Mr. Rainey. I took my money from the boat. Oh, God, please, where are they, God? Mr. Oh, Rainey? Thank you, God. Thank you. My I'm all right. Why wouldn't I be? You're all alone out there. Anything could happen and no one would know. No, I'm not alone. Mrs. Gavin's just left and uh, Greg Carstairs is going to be here to fix the roof. Oh, at last. Well, uh, tell Greg the new shingles have got to be cedar, like the old ones, hmm? A and he must make sure the wood's wet. Uh, Amy, Amy, why did you call? I had a feeling that you might not be okay. You are okay, aren't you, Mort? Yeah. Nothing's happened? No. Well... Oh, I knew it. Did you hurt yourself with that chainsaw? No. There's nothing requiring hospitalization. Just an, an, an annoyance, really. Does the name John Shooter ring a bell? No. Why? Amy, look, don't say no right off the bat like that. Just take a moment to think about it. The guy's about 6'1", mid-40s. He got a country kind of face, like a character out of Falkland. What's this about, Mort? Mort, are you still there? Well, he says... <laughs> he claims that I stole his story. What? You remember sewing season? Yeah. I didn't like it. Too gruesome. But well, Shooter claims he wrote that story, and I... I plagiarized it. <laughs> He turned up here with a manuscript, a story that's almost identical to mine. Oh, that doesn't prove anything. Yeah, I know, I know that, Amy. I know, I know that I didn't steal it, of course, but I have a feeling that he may not be so easily convinced. He's... Uh, there's something... intense. Stone crazy. About the guy. John Shooter? Yes. Well, I've never heard of him, Mort. It's not a name you forget. No. And there's been no one who looks like that around here, <laughs> not since you left. You're sure? Quite sure. Well, maybe Ted saw him then? Is that supposed to be funny? Oh, no. No, no. No, not at all. No. I... Ted doesn't come to this house. I go to his place. Well, not that it's any of your business. 
Anyway, don't change the subject. The point is, you're there on the lake all alone in the middle of nowhere. This, this man could be dangerous. Thank you for sharing that with me, Amy. Thank you so much for reassuring me that your hunky real estate agent with the blow-dried hair and the Hollywood tan isn't actually sleeping in my bed. What used to be my bed. So if Shooter calls again, you call Dave Newsom. Dave Newsom's forgotten what he had for breakfast by lunchtime. Mort! Oh, okay. Okay. If Shooter shows up, I'll, uh, I'll call Constable Newsom. Mort, do something else for me. What? Get out of the house. Now, take a walk around the lake, huh? Ever-loving ex may be an adulterous, backstabbing, two-timing bitch, but she's right about Tashmore Lake. Works every time. Seeps through the skin. If I was in the Big Apple, I'd be crazy by now. Hi there, Mr. Rainey. The man in the black hat was leaning on a dusty blue station wagon with Mississippi plates. In the clear fall air, he seemed scissored out of a swatch of reality that was brighter than the one Mort knew as a rule. I guess you had a chance to read my story by now. Yes, I have. I imagine it rang a bell. It certainly did. When did you write it? <laughs> I figured you'd ask me that. Well, I have to. When two fellows show up with the same story, that's serious. Very serious. And the only way to settle it, to decide who copied from whom, is to find out who wrote it first. Agreed? Guess that's why I came all the way up here from Mississippi. Hiya, boy. Oh, hiya, Tom. <laughs> now, where were we? We were trying to establish providence. That means... I know what that means. I may look like a shit kicker. I may come from a long line of shit kickers. Maybe that makes me a shit kicker myself. But it don't necessarily make me a stupid shit kicker. Okay, let's cut to the chase, Mr. Shooter. When did you write your story? Maybe my name's not Shooter at all. Maybe that's just a pen name. So what is your real name? I didn't say it wasn't. Only said maybe. Either way, that ain't part of our business. No, but when you wrote that story is... I wrote it seven years ago, 1992. Bingo. So, why wait so long before coming to see me? My book of short stories was published in 93. Because I didn't know. I guess you think everyone in the country reads your books. Now, I know better than that. But I never saw your story till this June. Oh, let me guess. You're too picky to bother with the trash I write, huh? After a hard day's milking, you like to sit at the kitchen table, fire up the old kerosene lamp, and unwind with a little Hardy or Proust? You smart ass. Huh? One of your friends told you how I'd ripped off your honestly wrought tail. Is that how it happened, Mr. Shooter? Nope. I got no friends. No family, neither. But I got a little spread south of Jackson, though, and I do have a dairy herd. Got electricity now. Oh, good for you. And come the evenings, yeah. Sometimes I read. But mostly I write stories. So who told you about my story? No one. I was planning on selling the farm, give myself more time to write... Had to go to Jackson to talk to a realtor. I hate a long bus ride without something to read. Oh, me too. So I went into the drugstore and grabbed the first book I saw, which was Everybody Drops the Dime. So you read Sewing Season on a Greyhound bus going to Jackson last June? Nope. I read it coming back, after I sold the farm, with a check for $60,000 in my pocket. Didn't think the other stories were any great shakes, by the way, but... Uh... They passed the time. Oh, thank you. Sewing season's not a bit like the others in the book. I'm surprised no one's noticed before. They have. My wife, for one, she didn't like it. How did you get it? That's what I really want to know. How in hell did a big money scribbler like you get to a pissant little burg in Mississippi to steal my goddamn story? Mr. Shooter, I you... want to know why, too, but how will be enough for right now. Well, just drop it! Drop it! 
What in the hell do you mean by that? You wrote your story in 1992. Yeah? I wrote mine in 89, end of the year. And it was published for the first time in June 1990 in a magazine. So I beat you by two years, Mr. Shooter, or whatever the hell your name is. So if anyone here has got a beef about plagiarism, it's me. <laughs> you liar! The hell I am! <laughs> Prove it! You come back to the house, and I'll show you the entry on the copyright page of the book. First published in Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine, June 1990. No! What? I don't care about the book. I've seen the book. Show me the magazine. I don't have it here. I bet you don't. Listen, this is just a summer place. I've got my books here, but the magazines with my work, they're in our year-round house in Derry. My wife is there now. Hey. Hey, hey, wait a minute. How did you know I'd be here? Remember the photo on the back of your book? Morton Rainey at his home on Tashmore Lake? Yeah. So this magazine's at your other house? Yes. And it has your story in it? Yes. And it's dated June 1990? Yes. It doesn't exist. I think we both know that. I'll show you. But you're a man who needs to do some long, hard thinking. I'll give you three days. What? Get your ex to send the magazine. I'll be back in three days, Mr. Rainey. Public... And then I'll tell you about the other reason I come here. The real reason. What's that? Be patient. You'll find out soon enough. Plug the phone, lie on the couch, and sleep. Well, it's gone five. The post office in Derry will be closed. Oh, why not? <sighs> Poor Mort. More lonely and scared than he'd ever felt in his entire life. Though, in fact, he had yet to discover what true horror was all about. Oh, no. No more, please. <laughs> I don't admit anything. Just stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. When Maud woke, it was dark outside. He ached horribly. picked up the phone and was puzzled by the silence. Until he remembered he'd pulled the jack, he stooped to plug it in. Through the window by the front door, he could see onto the porch where Shooter had left his manuscript yesterday. There was something out there. there are two somethings. A white something and a dark something. there? Come on, show yourself. The white thing was a sheet of typing paper with some words on it written in a large, bold hand. You have three days. I am not joking. Oh, no. no. The dark thing was Mort's cat. Someone had broken its neck, then pinned it through its chest to the porch steps with a screwdriver from Mort's own tool shed. Oh, bump, bump. He's still warm. Are you watching this, shooter? Come on, come on! I'll kill you, you bastard! Shooter? Mort, are you there? Oh, yes, Amy. Hey, where the hell have you been? I've been calling for three hours. I've been going crazy. Asleep. Yeah, sleep. Oh, you pulled the jack. Yeah. You picked a great time to do it, champ. Look, I tried to call you around five. Well, I was at Ted's. I'm still at Ted's. I, I guess I'll be here for a while to come, like it or not. Someone's burned our house down, Mort. What? Burned it to the ground. Shh. 
shooter did it to get rid of that magazine. No, no. Derry's a hundred miles from here. Bum's body was warm. If he drove fast, he'll oh, blame shooter for your divorce, why don't you? For making you sleep 16 hours a day. And hey, maybe he's an alien abductee or the second gunman on the grassy knoll. Shooter killed your cat. He means to do you harm, but do you really think he drove a hundred miles and torched a goddamn house to destroy a magazine? Get real. There were fire trucks there. Crowds. You know how I hate people gawking in the house. Even when it's not burning down. <laughs> honey. What? Honey, tell me what happened. Somebody burned down our house. That's what happened. Is it a total loss? It burned flat? Oh, nothing but ashes. Even my study? It started in your study, so the fire chief said. Well, it fits with what Patty saw, too. She, she was walking her dog just after dark, and she saw a car parked under our portico. Then she heard a, a crash, and she saw flames through the study window. Well, this car, did she get the make? I can't stop thinking about it. Your manuscript. Well, what did Patty see? The books, clothes, the antique furniture, the paintings, all our photographs. And you were worried about one lousy magazine. <laughs> answered my question. What question was that? Uh, oh, right, no. No, Patty didn't see the make car. So what did she see? She saw a man run out of the kitchen and and get into the car. Well, then, then the headlights came on and, and it roared out the driveway and down the street. And she didn't see the driver? Oh, it was dark. She was dazzled by the lights. Oh, damn. Oh, she ran home and dialed 911. The fire engines came fast, but it was old wood. Yeah, 120 years old. And if it was gasoline, which they seem to think he did... Mort. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm trying to take it in. Did the police come? Oh, yes. They asked a lot of questions, mostly about you, any enemies you might have had. I said I didn't think you had any enemies. I, I couldn't even tell them we were divorced. In the end, Ted told them. I bet he loved that. I know you don't like him, Mort, but... I couldn't have coped without him. I just couldn't have handled it. Then I'm glad he was there. Oh, Mort, my mother's Bible, I just remembered it. It was the only thing of hers that I had. <laughs> Amy, are you sure you're up to this? It's okay, Ted. Really. A Amy, look, I'll be there in the morning, first thing. If I leave at 7, I can be with you by 9.30, maybe 9.00. Uh, Greg Carstairs is coming to start on the roof. I better call him before I leave. And I need to call Herb, too. That's me, Herbert Creekmore, Mort's literary agent. Charge up that cell phone I gave you last Christmas. Then you can do it on the way. <laughs> Good idea. You'll. You'll stay at Ted's tonight? Yes. Have you got your pills? They were in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. oh, I wouldn't take them anyway, Mort. I'm, I'm not stressed, I'm just heartsick. Honey, if you think I should come up tonight... Oh, no, there's, there's nothing you could do. Should we meet at Ted's? A woman who could steal your love when your love was really all you had. How about the coffee shop on Witcham Street? Marshman's. Would you prefer I came alone? No, no, bring Ted, that's... That, yeah, that'll be okay. Marshman's, uh... Around nine. If I get there first, I'll chalk a mark on the door. And if I get there first, I'll rub, rub it, it out. out. <laughs> oh, I hate to think of all the manuscripts you've lost. All those stories. Three days, Mr. Rainey. You'll be hearing from me. Now, why don't you tell Amy you had a little trouble up here, too? No, no, she's got enough to worry about. If only you'd move them out. That doesn't matter, honey. I... I got my new novel up here. All oh, 14 crappy wooden pages of it. To hell with the rest. I'll see you tomorrow, Amy. I still love you. I'm sorry about this. Me too, Mort. So very sorry.
It could have been Shooter. Yeah, it could have been Saddam Hussein, or the CIA, or extraterrestrials, but it wasn't. You have three days. I am not joking. That's evidence you should show it to the cops. No. No cops. I'm gonna handle this myself. But first, sleep. If I can. Mort lay on the couch. His face turned from the darkness pressing against the window. Soon, despite his expectations, sleep rolled over him in a smooth black wave. And if anyone peered in on him, he didn't know about it. Mort Rainey's alarm clock woke him at 6.15. He took half an hour to bury his cat bump on the banks of Tashmore Lake, and by seven he was behind the wheel of his old Buick heading for Derry, towards the ashes of the house he'd once shared with his wife. Ten miles down the road, Mort noticed he was running on fumes. He pulled into a gas station, and while the pump jockey filled the Buick's bottomless tank, Mort fished out his cell phone. First, he called... Greg Carstairs. Hi, Greg. Mort Rainey. More, my man. <laughs> I guess you got some trouble up in Derry. You know about that? Yeah, heard it on the radio news. I'm real sorry, man. Oh, well, thanks, Greg. I'm on my way there now. Can you do me a favor while I'm gone? Well, name it, man. Look, there's been a guy bothering me the last few days. Claims I stole his story. <laughs> I told him I published my version two years before he says he wrote his. I hoped he'd take my word for it, but uh, no such luck. Last night, he, um, he killed my cat. He killed Bump? Yeah, that's right. Well, this guy sounds crazy, Mord. Did he talk to Dave Newsom about this? I'd rather handle it myself. Killing a cat's not killing a man. <laughs> Besides, Dave's uh, slowed a little since he turned 70. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so what do you want me to do about it? Well, for start, I I'd like to know where the guy's staying. Uh, has he got a name? The name on his story was John Shooter, but that might be a pseudonym. What's he look like, then? Uh, 6'1", 40-something. You have He's three got days. I am not joking. You know Shooter's dangerous, so why are you playing this down? Do you mean to hurt him? Is that it? Well, that could be half the farmers in western Maine. Well, okay, okay. Um, he's a southerner, uh, quite an accent. Oh, he wears a black hat. I like the Amish. Drives an old Ford station wagon. It's blue. Uh, Mississippi plates. Okay. I'll ask around. Someone should have seen him. Hey, try Tom Greenleaf. I was talking to Shooter yesterday on Lake Drive, and Tom passed in his Jeep. He slowed down to say hi. He must have got a good look at him. Well, suppose I track this guy down, Mort. What do I do? Oh, nothing. I'll call you tonight. Shooter wants proof. He wants to see the magazine with my story in it. Unfortunately, it was in the house in Derry. Oh, man. Yeah, so, so what are you going to do? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call my agent, get him to send another copy. But listen, Mort, if you go to meet this guy, yeah. maybe I should be there in case there's trouble. Then Mort called me, just like he said. Mort, this shooter fella sounds dangerous. Careful, Mort. You know, Herb, he's going to insist you call the cops. And the house? You really think it's arson? Well, it seems pretty certain. Mort, who do such a thing? Could it be the Shooter fellow? I don't think so, Herb. The timing makes it highly unlikely. Shooter may be spooky, but he can't be in two places at once. Besides, torching a house to get rid of a magazine? Come on. Mort, the characteristic of crazy folks is they do crazy things. Yeah, point taken. But the guy is certain I stole his story. When I said I could prove I didn't, he knew I was lying. So why bother to destroy something you don't believe exists in the first place? Exactly. You've called the cops, of course. Why, well, yeah, I made a call earlier this morning. To Greg Carstairs. Because you've got enough on your plate without worrying about some madman. 
If he bothers you again, get him arrested for stalking. I'd rather convince him to take his persecution act than put it on the road. Which is the reason for this call. How can I help you, Mark? You keep my stuff on file. Yeah, but I, I would Look, only... I need you to pull the June 90 issue of Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. That, that's the one with my story in it. I wish I could. I, I, I don't have it. Why not? You wrote that story before I came on board as your agent. And so did yourself. I only keep copies of work I sold for you. Sorry, Morn. Oh, God. How could I forget? You've I... been under a lot of pressure lately, Morn. Yeah. You want me to call EQMM? They keep back issues. Oh, would you, Herb? Hey, that'd be swell. Hey, no problem, partner. I'll just settle up my house, get it around and up right away. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mort. Hi, Hey, don't I get a hug? Oh, of course. <laughs> but not a kiss. No kisses for Mort anymore. Not from Amy. I'm so sorry about this. The fire, I mean. Yeah. Me too. Ted's over there. Hey there, Mort. Ted. How you keeping? Fine. Why don't we sit down? Well, I bet y'all could use a cup of coffee after that drive. Mm. Yeah, we got time, don't we, honey? Honey. In 20 minutes. And then we got to go to the site. The site. How sensitive. And to meet Lieutenant Bradley from the Dairy PD. We think the perp tossed it through a window. Just about there. Into your study, Mort. My God. It must have gone up like a rocket. Got any enemies, Mr. Rainey? No one hates me this much. What about this weirdo, Mort? John Shooter, your wife, told me about him. Some uh, dispute over a story? Yeah, that's right, Lieutenant. I understand he was pretty angry with you. Angry enough to torture your house? Well, maybe at first, but I looked up the date when my story was first published. Now you scooped him? <laughs> yeah, by two years. He didn't realize the story was originally printed in a magazine, so... I had him, you see. I see, Mr. Rainey. But did he? Oh, uh... Tell them what Shooter did to Bump and it'll break Amy's heart. And open up a nasty can of worms. Did he see, Mr. Rainey? Yes, Lieutenant. He saw. So what the heck did he do, Mort? He uh, jumped into his car like his ass was on fire and took off. You have to notice the make and license? Oh, sorry, I'm not too hot with cars. Well, the guy himself, then. What did he look like? Oh, 30-something. Uh, blonde. Yeah? Uh, average height. That's really all I remember. Didn't you say he wore a hat? Oh, thank you, Amy. Yeah, uh, a baseball cap. Look, Lieutenant, I know in novels everything's connected, but in real life things just happen. Couldn't this be vandals, local kids out for kicks? Could be. It doesn't hurt to check all the angles, though, does it? Well, I'm done for now. Here's my card. Any more thoughts on the matter? <clears throat> oh, I'll call you, of course. Thanks. Mrs. Rainey, Mr. Milner? I'm sorry about this, Amy. All of it. So am I. And Teddy makes three. <laughs> God, I'd like to strangle that man till his eyes pop out. Amy? Now, now, remember what Lieutenant Bradley said about it being unsafe. Don't worry, Ted. We just want to take a last look, Ted. Yeah. Why don't you just wait there? Okay, but be careful, honey. I'm glad the flowers are over. Mm. The fire would have burned them, too. That would have been sad. This was your private garden. Mm. Tucked in the angle between your study and the rest of the house. You could only see it properly from my little office. Yeah. Amy's room. Best darn room in the house. Yeah, too small, <laughs> too noisy. Noisy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sound of the washing machine coming through the wall was comforting. Yeah. I planted the flowers specially so I could see them from the window. Remember what I used to say? I've got a secret window looking down on a secret garden. What? What was that? 
I said I've got a secret window and it looks down on a secret garden. Secret window, secret garden. A short story by John Shute. Oh, my God. Mort? Are you okay? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, to tell the truth, I feel a little faint. Yeah, you should have eaten something at the coffee shop, good buddy. It's not about food, Ted. It's, it's all this. Let's get out of here. Well, the insurance people will do it now. Well, th yeah. that's an hour from now. Let's get out of here, Ted. I, I don't feel so hot myself. They met Fred Evans, an arson specialist of the house, then went back to the company office. Evans asked pretty much the same questions as Lieutenant Bradley, except he was gentler and more probing. You've been helpful. Courteous, too. Well, you made it easy for us, Mr. Evans. Well, I'm afraid this next part ain't easy. Now, um... This is, a. Uh, it's a list of the house contents. I, I want you to put a check mark by any items that are no longer in your possession, or that weren't in the house at the time of the fire. I'm told there's been a separation of residents recently, so that last bit is important. Yeah, Amy and I are divorced. I'm living at our summer place on Tashmore Lake. Unfortunately, I hadn't moved any of my stuff out of the house here. I, I kept putting it off. Yeah, well, do your best. I know it's unpleasant to... Uh, a bit like a treasure hunt in reverse. Mm -hmm. Amy, let's see. Hey, back off. Uh, Mort. This was our stuff, Amy. Ours. Mort, come on. You think I uh, care uh, about... Mr. Milner, please. Uh, you got no legal right to look at that list. We wink at it if nobody minds, but... I think Mr. Rainey does. You're damn right I do. All right. I'll take a walk around the block. Well, would you, Ted? It, it might be easier. Yeah, make it a couple of blocks. I'll see you later, honey. Why don't I see you out, Mr. Milner? Thank you. Satisfied? Amy. I'm sorry. I, I didn't handle that well, but we shared a lot over the years, and this is the very last thing. Okay? Okay. Oh, God, the photo albums the Waterford Crystal. That little Wyeth sketch of the boys in the boat. <gasps> the quilt my mother gave us when we got married. <laughs> Ten long, sad minutes later, it was over. Mort and Amy both signed the affidavit, thanked Fred Evans, then met Ted Moona outside the insurance office. Well, uh, Amy and I are going to grab us a bite of lunch, Mort. You care to join us? Ah, uh, no thanks. I just want to get back, do some work. See if I can forget all this for a while. Good yeah. idea. Thanks for coming, Mort. Okay. For being so reasonable about everything. You'll be okay? We'll be okay. Hey, Mort, don't y'all worry now. Teddy is going to take good care of this little lady. Yeah. Come on. Ted. Your accent. Hmm? Is it Mississippi? A long way north of there. I grew up in a little town 50 miles south of Nashville. You wouldn't have heard of it. Shooter's Ridge, Tennessee. Moore drove back to Tashmore in a daze. I can smell Shooter. Trying to psych me out? It won't work. I'm wise to your game. He's a violent man. Get some protection. You upstairs, shooter? Why are you doing this? Try the bathroom. Slowly. Slowly. One. Two. Three! You burned the 
killed the mirror. You've brained the bathroom cabinet and killed the goddamn mirror. I'm so tired. I'm just so tired. Shooter. Oh, I don't think so. Sounded like you pitched a fit. All that holler you and You were here. Threw a tantrum, did you? Because things weren't going your way. When you see the magazine with my story in it, will you leave me alone? There ain't no magazine. We both know that. Now, God damn it! you'll see that there is... I saw a picture of your house in the newspaper. What was left of it. Had a picture of your wife, too. Pretty woman. You leave Amy out of this. This is between you and me. What the hell do you want? I want you to write me a story. What? I want you to write me a story, put my name on it, and give it to me. You owe me that. The only thing I'll write for you is your death warrant. Oh, you talk big. Because you know I can't hurt on you. Can't break your neck like I broke your cats because the goods I want are locked up in your head. So I gotta find me the key, Pilgrim. What the hell are you jabbering about, Pilgrim? like to leave her out of it. I really would. What are you saying? How'd you like to wake up from one of your naps to find Amy nailed to the porch? That's what I'm saying. You have two days to think about that, Mr. Rainey. Herb, Herb, that story. Have you got it? What story, Mort? Sewing season, remember? Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. Oh, that. They're going to bike a Xerox over to me tomorrow. I'll FedEx uh, no. it. No, 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 not, not a Xerox, Herb. A, a copy won't do. It's just got to be the real magazine. Oh, well, that's, that's tougher. They don't like lending them out. Herb, please. This is life and death. Shooters that paranoid, huh? I'm afraid so. Is he dangerous, too? Oh, no, no, not dangerous, just very stubborn. And I want him off my back. I've taken a lot of crap lately I could do nothing about. Okay, but Mort, I... I'll beg him or I'll bribe him, but I'll get it to you. One original copy of EQMM June 19. Hey, Herb, I love you. <laughs> You're one hell of a swell guy. Oh, shucks, a man's got to do what's right, Pilgrim. You talk big, Pilgrim. What? Mort? Mort, are you still there? Uh, yeah. Uh, s sorry. A, a bad line. I lost you for a moment. Look, Herb, I, I won't keep you now, but thanks. You're a real lifesaver. You're welcome. And, Maud, yeah. take care. Plagiarism? Not on that story. Not that story? On the others? Hey. No. No, my work may be a little derivative at times, but plagiarism... No, no, no! Mort? Mort, are you in there? Oh. <laughs> Hiya, Greg. Hang on, I'm coming. Come in. I, uh... <laughs> caught up with Tom Greenleaf this afternoon. He and Sonny Trotz are painting the Methodist Parish Hall. Did you ask Tom about Shooter? Yeah, I did. Tom thinks you must have mixed up your days. Mixed up? What does he mean? He says he did swing by Lake Drive yesterday afternoon, and he did see you. Uh-huh. He waved. You waved back, but... But? But what? Tom says you were alone. Jeez, Greg. Well, maybe Tom's mixed up. He's not exactly, uh... A spring chicken? No, but he's got an eye for strangers. It's part of his job. He says he only saw you. 
You're standing by the path that runs down to the lake. Greg, did Tom seem okay when you talked to him? He was dog-tired. He'd been painting all day. I see what you're saying, Mort. I guess he could have slipped his mind. No, that's not what I'm saying. When you spoke to him, could Tom have been scared? Well, it's possible. You see, Greg, I'm beginning to think that Shooter wants me, and maybe others too, to believe I'm going mad. I think we should go over to Tom's place. Now. Make sure he's okay. There's a note pinned to the door. What does it say? Do not disturb. Greg, I don't like it. He's in bed. I can see him breathing. Even so, something's not right. Tom saw us on Lake Drive, both of us. I believe you, man. I don't like the way Tom sounded over there. He was off, you know? Well, let's talk to him together in the morning. We'll catch him at the Methodist Parish Hall around 9.30. Sonny! Sonny! Whoa! Whoa! Hi there! Sonny, I'm looking for Tom Greenleaf. Mm -hmm. I thought he was helping you. Well, he was, Mr. Rainey, but he called in sick. He didn't sound his usual self at all. Well, when was this? Oh, it was early. About six. So this wind is giving him a chill. Anything I can do? No, I need Tom. Mm. Have you seen Greg Carstairs? I'm supposed to meet him here. Oh, I haven't been around this morning. I've been painting here for better than an hour. Shooter got them. He got them both. I guess he just forgot. Yeah. I guess so. Oh, hey, M Mr. Rainey, I, I just thought of something. Mr. Rainey? Moore drove home round the edge of the lake. The trees blazed with late fall fire, but the lake itself looked cold and dead. No boats, no hikers, no picnickers on the banks. Hello? Stop the car, Mr. Rainey. How the hell did you get my cell phone number, Shooter? That's unlisted. A lot of things about you ain't listed, Mr. Rainey. I still know them, though. Now pull in, unless you want to crash. Now look here, Shooter. Stay on the phone. Get out of the car. Where are you? Are you watching me? Walk around to the back of the car. Yeah. And now open the trunk. Little souvenir. Your hat. Oh, when did you put that there? Did, <laughs> did you take my car last night? Pick it up. It stinks, Shooter. Sweat and cigarettes and you. Try it on. Oh, thanks, I'd rather not. Go on. You know you want to. Good fit? Why are you doing this? What do you expect? Listen up. Remember where we were standing yesterday when that old fart in the Jeep tool by? I remember. I want you to drive there. Now, look, I'm not... Now. Shooter? Shooter, where are you? <laughs> right. See that copse of trees down toward the lake? I see it. Take a stroll down there. Tell me what you see. I don't believe I want to, Mr. Shooter. <laughs> yes, Mr. Rainey, I believe you do. Hmm. 
you know what you're going to find. See anything interesting yet? There it is. Tom Greenleaf's Jeep. Oh, God. Oh, no. Tom in the front. Greg in the back. Open the door. Take a closer look. <laughs> See the name on the axe handle? Rainy. I found the screwdriver in your tool shed, too. You probably recognize it. You killed them both. I know that. And you know that. But who knows what other folks will think. Shut up! It was just a squirrel looking down at Mort with bright hate from the branch of a maple. But Mort's legs gave up anyway. He collapsed like a tree, and the world swam away. What do you want, Shooter? What the hell do you want? I want you to write me a story. Not only is my home in ashes, and I've got a psycho saying I ripped off his story, but the same psycho killed my cat. How'd you like to wake up from one of your naps to find Amy nailed to the porch? I'm gonna kill you! I'm gonna kill you both! I'm gonna kill you! I'm gonna kill you! Mort Rainey came to, face down in dirt and leaves at the edge of Tashmore Lake. For a long moment, he had no idea where he was or how he got there. Then, Slowly and painfully, he turned his head and saw his own face staring back at him like a grotesque funhouse mask from one of the hubcaps of Tom Greenleaf's Jeep. Oh, no. Oh, no. no, no, no. Open the door. Take a closer look. Then Mort remembered there were two men sitting in the Jeep with tools sticking out of their heads. You killed them. You killed them both. Oh. <laughs> Said you, Shooter, what do you want? I told you, Mr. Rainey. I want a story to make up for the one you stole. Or ain't you ready to admit to that yet? Agree with him. Tell him anything. The Earth is flat. John Lennon and Elvis are alive and well and playing banjo duets on Mars. And you stole I didn't his... steal your stinking story! You're deluded, you goddamn loon, and I can prove it! I have the magazine! You hear me? I have the magazine! Do you have it now? What? What do you say? I said, do you have this magazine in your hands? Do you have it now? No. <laughs> it's so. coming from Federal Express. It'll, it'll be at the Tashmore Post Office by 10 tomorrow morning. Some fuzzy old copy? No, the actual magazine, the real thing, Shooter. There ain't no magazine. Not with that story in it. That story is mine. Ten tomorrow. I'll meet you at the post office. You can take a look, Shooter. You can study the goddamn thing. Uh-uh. Not the post office. Your house. Forget it. When I show you that magazine, I want to be someplace I can yell for help. No. We do it my way. Or I'll send you to the state prison for murder. You get your magazine tomorrow morning. I'll be at your place around noon. You're crazy. I should just get the hell out of here. Listen hard, Mr. Rainey. If I find you gone tomorrow, I will burn your life like a cane break in the wind. Mort staggered back to his Buick and drove home. He thought about phoning the state police, telling them everything. Why not? I'm a famous author. And John Shooter is... What? A phantom? A delusion? Yeah? Mort? Oh, hi, Amy. Mort, I I'm so worried about you. Me? Oh, Amy, I I'm okay. Are you sure? When I saw you yesterday, you seemed so... strained. The way you were before you had the... you know... Amy, I did not have a nervous breakdown. Well, no, but you know what I mean. When the movie people were being so nasty about the Delacour family script, when they got worried about plagiarism... Amy, there was never any question of plagiarism! No, 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 I, I know. 
It was a superficial resemblance between the plot of my novel and some other property that they'd optioned. They were scared of legal problems. That's why they pulled the plug. You said yourself they were a bunch of wusses. Well, I, I know all that. And it didn't seem such a big deal to me, but, but you seem to find it... Amy, there different. was no nervous breakdown. Not then and not now. You, uh... You calling from Ted's? Yes. How do you feel about him these days? I love him, Mort. Uh-huh. Call me if you need me, Mort. Okay? <sighs> Mort made a fire, drew up a chair and tried to read the current issue of Harper's. But he kept falling asleep. At last, he walked over to the couch, lay down, adjusted the pillows. Only once. I only did it once. Oh. Oh. In his dream, he was in the world's largest classroom. Four hundred and ninety-six. Four hundred and ninety-seven. Don't stop, Rainy. Oh, sir, please. Keep running. John Kinner. Stealing a man's work when his work is all he has? Why, Rainy? That's despicable. Unforgivable. I know you. We've met before. You're. That's right, Bill. You just put me together wrong. Now keep running. I will not copy John Kintner. Five hundred. There. Finished. It's not five hundred, you dummy. It's five thousand. No, 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 no! Mort woke up on the floor between the couch and the ashes of the fire. Dawn was coming up, milky in the east. Oh, I'm all right. It was just a dream. And I'm all right. No, that wasn't just a dream. Oh. Because John Kintner really existed. How in God's name could you have forgotten John Kintner? <laughs> he walked unsteadily into the kitchen and made coffee. Lots of strong, hot coffee. Oh, God, John Kintner. I've never heard that name before. Tell me about him. Oh, got lost, Herb. Come on, Mort. I'm your agent. You've got no secrets from me. It was so long ago. It's ancient history. Tell me, anyway. Well, when I was a creative writing major at Bates, John Kintner was in my class. He was a country boy from down south, Mississippi, maybe. <laughs> With a face you might see in the North Forty at the ass end of a mule. But boy, could he write. One day, our tutor gave the class one of Kintner's stories to criticize. Uh, what was it called? Let me guess. Secret window, secret garden? No, it wasn't. You're mixing things up. Crowfoot Mile. That's what it was called. God, it was good. It was better than anything I could have written at that time by a long way. It wasn't even Kintner's best either. Maybe I should sign him up. Not possible, Herb. Because at the end of the sophomore year, 
John Kintner disappeared. I never heard of him again. I'll bet you weren't exactly sorry. Well, okay. Okay, I admit it. With Kintner gone, I was the best, and I liked that. I started writing then, sending stories to magazines, and one in particular, Aspen Quarterly. Its editors sent back my work with handwritten notes. Good work, but not quite good enough. Keep trying. And you did? Yeah, I tried. But I, uh, I could not crack Aspen Quarterly. And then one day, the summer after I graduated, I found the copy of John Kintner's story that the tutor had given us. Crowfoot Mile. And I thought, I bet even John Kintner couldn't get into Aspen Quarterly. So you sent in the story? Yeah. Under your own name? Yes, Herb. Under my own name. Oh, Jesus, Lord. And they accepted it? Right off the bat. It was the most shameful event of my life. I waited for the explosion. All that summer and into the fall, I was sick with anxiety. I knew if I was ever found out, my brilliant career would be over before it had begun. But you weren't found out. Early November, I got a letter from Aspen Quarterly. I was shaking so much, I could hardly open it. What was in the letter? They... <laughs> they wanted more stories. <laughs> they couldn't understand why I hadn't sent them others. <laughs> they were worried... <laughs> that I didn't like the typesetting herb. <laughs> the goddamn typesetting! You got away with it. Clean. And I've never done anything like that since. So why has it come back to haunt you now? Why now? Why now? Why now? Why now? I don't know. I just don't know. Don't even think about it. Put it out of your mind. Yeah. But you can't, can you? You know why. Shut up. Because you might be ill. Man. Shut up. You might be very ill. You might be having a nervous no, break. Shut up! The coffee mug flew across the room, and Mort saw long, silvery cracks zigzag right up the picture window. He felt a similar crack running through the middle of his brain. He went into the living room, set the alarm for 10 o'clock, the time he had to go to the post office and pick up the FedEx package and closed his eyes. Have a nice day, Juliet. Yeah, you too, Babs. <laughs> Have a good one. Okay, bye. Next. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Rainey, you all right? Oh, I'm sorry, Juliet. My, my throat kind of double-clutched on me there. You look very pale. I think I had a bad lobster. Uh, have you got anything for me from Frederick Express? No, not a thing. Pardon me? I said just the one thing. Oh, great, great. Wonderful. Jeez, Mort. People have died for that. What? I said, please, Mort, would you sign for that? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah of course, yeah. Thanks, Julia. You're crazy. Huh? Take it easy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You're not well. It could be a brain tumor or something. He looked down at the package in his hands. Open now. He shook what was inside out onto his lap. Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine, June 1990. His name wasn't on the cover. Oh, no. It wouldn't be. You weren't famous then. There was no contents page. No. The story's gone, too. Pages 83 to 97 were missing. Shooter! How could Shooter have done it? 
That magazine came FedEx from New York. Straight to Juliet. She's in on it, too. She's lived in Tashmore forever. I can smell it. Shooter! Come out of there! He's not here. He was here. Look. Mort's computer lay upside down on the floor. Its screen was shattered. On the desk where it had stood was an old royal typewriter. It was dull and dusty. Propped on the keyboard was a manuscript. Secret window, secret garden. The same manuscript Shooter left on the porch a million years ago. I don't get it. What don't you get? It's my old typewriter, and yet it's... It's the one Shooter's manuscript is typed on. So? I haven't used it for years. It was at the back of the closet. How did Shooter get it? How did he use it to write his story? I just... Get it! Don't you? I... <laughs> you got it, Mort. I... There is no John Shooter. No. I do not accept that. There never has been. I do not accept that! Think about it, Mort. All those long naps, waking up with your muscles screaming, feeling like you've been digging ditches. You've been busy, Mort. Driving to dairy, setting fires, killing cats. Not only cats. Busy, busy, busy. And the name, John Shooter. Half from your old classmate, John Kintner. From Mississippi. Whose work you stole. And the other half... I grew up in a little town 50 miles south of Nashville. You wouldn't have heard of it. Shooter's Ridge, Tennessee. From the guy who took your wife. It's like a bad joke. You're sick, Mort, in the head. Very sick. No! No, I do not accept that! You murdered Tom Greenleaf and Greg Carstairs. You killed them because they were gonna find you out. No, no, no. This is all part of his plan. His mind game. I do not accept it. 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 Tell me one thing. Why did you do it? Why did you do it, Mort? This whole elaborate homicidal episode. Why? Schurter kept saying he wanted a story. But there is no shooter, so what do you want, Mort? Stop. Listen. What did you create John Shooter for? He's here! John Shooter's here! stank. Stale cooking, rotten food, musty air. Flies buzzed around the remains of a pizza trodden into the floor. Mort! Mort! The room was full of paper, as if Mort had taken every copy of everything he'd ever written and strewn it about like confetti at some weird wedding. The table was heaped with decayed food in dirty dishes. The picture window was shattered, and everywhere, everywhere, was one word. Shooter. It was scrawled on the walls in colored chalk, sprayed on the windows in what looked like dried whipped cream, written over and over on the kitchen counters in black ink, even carved into the cherry wood table in jagged letters, three feet high. Shooter. 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 More? Here. In the writing room. I thought it got burned in the fire. It's my hat. Always has been. Wasn't ever anybody else's. Mort? What's wrong? Mort's dead. He did a lot of squirming, and in the end, he took the coward's way out. 
I never put a hand to him, Mrs. Rainey, I swear. Why are you talking like that? Everybody talks like this down in Mississippi. Mort, stop! I just told you, Mort Rainey is dead. He killed himself. Stop it, Mort! You're making me scared. Don't matter. Stop! <laughs> No, no, Mort. Put those down, please. You won't be scared for long. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You shouldn't have done that, Mrs. Rainey. That was not smart. <laughs> I got a spot by the lake, all oh, picked out. Soft ground, easy to dig. Oh, gotcha! <laughs> like a hooked catfish. That's it. You just lie there. Lie there and be still. I'm sorry, lady, but you gotta die. Rainy! Back off! You must see that. You just gotta die. Morton Rainey! I said back off! There ain't no Morton Rainey here. My name... Oh, Amy. Oh, my darling, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? <laughs> Okay, Mrs. Rainey. It's okay. It's okay. When Fred Evans found forensics that linked Mort to the fire, the whole tangle of string that was Mort's tortured personality began to unravel. Fred had guessed that Mort was lying about some stuff. That's what took him to Tashmore that day and saved Amy's life. At the inquest, a shrink picked up that string and ran with it, talking about split personalities, schizophrenic episodes. And when Ted and Amy were sitting across the desk from Fred Evans, he elaborated a little. He'd given the matter a great deal of thought. Your husband created characters, right? Hmm? Now he's what he did for a living. Well, that's right. So he created John Shooter to punish you for leaving him, I suppose. Uh, yeah, for hitching up with uh, with Mr. Milner here. You know, that, that makes sense to me. No, no, I, I think you're wrong. About the why, I mean. Shooter was there to punish Mort. Well, why? Wait, for what? <laughs> Plagiarism. Sure. I believe Mort stole someone's work sometime in the past, long before he became famous. <laughs> The shame and, and the guilt of that festered... Uh, right, and, and produced John Shooter, yes. who arrived like an avenging angel to accuse Mr. Rainey of stealing his wife. Well, because the real victim never did. <laughs> Plagiarism, come on. I mean, what about murder? Mort killed two men, Amy. He tried to kill you. No, that was Shooter. Amy, come the on. The real Shooter. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't follow you there. I don't understand it myself. That, that's why I'm here. I don't think telling this serves any purpose, and Mort's dead. It's over, but, but it may help me sleep a little better. You better tell it then, Amy. When Ted and I went to Tashmore to sort out the house, we stopped at the store in town. While Ted filled up with gas, I went in. I met a man there, Sonny Trotz, used to work with Tom Greenleaf. One of the men who was murdered. Yeah. Sonny told me he was sorry about Mort. He told me something else, too. Something he tried to tell Mort the day before he died. Oh, hey, Mr. Rainey! I, I just thought of something. Mr. Mr. Rainey! It was about Tom Greenleaf. Something Tom had told Sonny. That he'd seen a ghost. What? Tom Greenleaf oh. drove along Lake Drive in his Jeep the day Shooter first appeared. He passed Mort standing by himself. Mort called and waved. Tom waved back and, and drove on. Well then, according to Sonny, 
Tom looked in his rearview mirror and saw another man with Mort and an old station wagon, though neither the man nor the car had been there ten seconds before. Amy, for The man was sake. wearing a black hat, Tom said, and you could see right through him. Through the car, too. Amy, the guy was spinning you alive. Well, Sonny Trotz isn't smart enough to make up something like that. Well, it's certainly creepy, but it's hearsay, Amy. Hearsay from a dead man. Yes, but there's the other thing. Ted, pass me my bag. When I was clearing out Mort's office, I, I found Shooter's hat, that awful black hat. I picked it up with a stick and dumped it in the trash. Yeah, good. Anyway, an hour later, I went out with another bag, and when I opened the lid of the garbage box, the hat was turned over. This was tucked into the sweatband. Mm. Weird paper. I think there was a John Shooter. He was Mort's greatest creation, a character so vivid he became real and i think that's a message from him lady i'm sorry for your trouble things got out of hand i'm going home now i got my story which is all i came for in the first place it is called crowfoot mile and it is a crackerjack yours truly john shooter Amy Milner and Fred Evans never met again. They got on with their lives as best they could. And sometimes in the night they both woke from dreams in which a man in a black hat looked at them from sun-faded eyes. He looked with no love, but with a kind of stern pity. It wasn't a comforting expression, but they both felt in their different places that they could live with that look and tend their gardens.